the Army's electronic proving ground at Fort Huachuca, Arizona, something new for the Signal Corps. There she goes, but what is it? It's the latest development in the field of reconnaissance aircraft. Electronically controlled from the ground, the pilotless drone, as it's called, makes its landing by parachute. Once the drone is on the ground, a Signal Corps specialist arrives to pick up the aerial camera mounted in the fuselage and return with the film for processing. Another mission is complete. The occasion is the first public demonstration of the new scout plane, and signal officers join the eager spectators for a demonstration of the mobility of the new device. Towed by a truck, this 60-foot jet launcher can be set up in any open area, and the drone is ready for business. A redesigned target plane, the drone is powered by a gasoline engine that can push it along at about 230 miles per hour. With that speed and a wingspan of only 12 feet, she's a difficult target for enemy marksmen. At last, everything's ready for the jet assisted takeoff. Here you can see the high maneuverability of the drone as it responds instantly to radio signals from the ground. This is what does the trick. Now directed by artillery observers, the drone starts its aerial camera, and this is what it sees. In clear detail, it captures for study the outlines of roads and vehicle placements flying at a height that would be near suicide for a light reconnaissance plane, but with no danger to its operator, safe on the ground. Then she banks and heads for home. As she returns to base, it's mission accomplished, proving conclusively that a pilotless craft can bring a field commander aerial photos within an hour, in any weather, over any terrain and most important, without risking human lives. For the electronic drone, it's a highly successful debut that could revolutionize aerial photo reconnaissance. In a democracy, your vote is important. Every vote is important. You citizens in uniform must share the responsibility of all Americans in using your birthright, the privilege of saying what you are for and what you are against. In the next election, millions of citizens will decide how our government shall be run. What you are for and what you are against makes itself felt on election day. If you cast your vote. First films of the Albacore. For the men of the undersea service, this is the shape of things to come. A hand-picked crew is coming aboard for a test run at sea to try out the radically new hull shape and control system. Notice the slim silhouette of that new conning tower. With all hands aboard, the skipper casts off and cons the albacore carefully out of her berth, heading for deep water. At sea, her rounded body shows the striking resemblance between albacore the submarine and the fast, rangy game fish she's named after. Below decks, the crew's quarters reflect the albacore's smaller size. Compact, all right, but comfortable. If you want more elbow room, there's always the wardroom. And where you find submariners, you'll find cribbage. When you're not on duty, you can always run down to the galley for a 
cup of that hot joe that's always on tap. And maybe while you're down there, you sneak a sniff of what's cooking for supper. But back to business. Time to rendezvous with a Navy airship for a practice dive. The engine room reports everything running smoothly. And in the airplane light control room, the crew is all set. Skipper, let's take a look around. Everything working smooth as silk. Down scope and take her topside. Back in the sunshine, test successful. Those new type control fins and back make a big difference in underwater maneuvering. On the surface, she tends to wallow and roll. But then she's shaped more like a fish than a boat. Submarines of the past have had hulls much like conventional craft for surface cruising. But with atomic engines in sight, that round fish body is designed for swift, long-range cruising beneath the surface. She's the Navy's answer to the demand for more fast-moving firepower under the sea. Your Congress has enacted a law to assist you to vote. The law provides that you may vote by absentee ballot in almost all states. The federal voting law applies to all members of the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard, their families, dependents, and in fact, all qualified civilians abroad. The law, however, does not guarantee your right to vote unless you qualify under the laws of your own state. See your voting officer today. He will help you qualify. Remember, you can't vote without a ballot, and you can't get a ballot unless you send for it. Vote! From Castle Air Force Base in California, first films of a global weapon. She's the Strategic Air Command's new jet bomber, the B-52. To give you an idea of her size, across the stretch of her back-swept wings, she measures 185 feet, every inch a polished example of a designer's dream. She carries eight jet engines, a lot of power, but it takes a lot of power to lift the load she can carry. Readying the big ship for the takeoff, maintenance personnel remove the airflow indicators used in streamlining experiments. And up front, a last-minute inspection. The B-52 carries a small crew, only six men, and everyone a skilled specialist in his job. That tail fin's about the height of a four-story house. To the tail gunner, this is home sweet home. But let's take a look at this debutante in the air. Watch for the massive quadruple landing gear, eight wheels with smaller ones at the wingtips for additional safety. The figures on her performance in the air are just as impressive as her appearance. She cruises easily at better than 600 miles per hour and at heights around 10 miles above the Earth. Without refueling, the B-52 can range more than 6,000 miles non-stop. And with air-to-air -air refueling like this, there's no spot on Earth that's out of her reach.
Exercise complete, she heads for home. Gradually, the B-52 will replace the larger and slower B-36s presently in use in the Strategic Air Command. It's another forward step in air research and one more vital clause in our national insurance policy against a possible attack from the air.